Hey guys, welcome to our mini lesson on time signature. Um, even if you don't know what time signature means, every single person who's been taking lessons with me this year has seen a time signature. And some of you have even played pieces in different time signatures, okay? So another name for time signature is meter. So if you hear somebody talking about the meter of a piece, it's the same as the time signature. I'm gonna call it time signature. Here is what a time signature looks like. I'm gonna start with our most common time signature, four, four. So it kind of looks like a fraction, except there's no line here. And you just say the top number and the bottom number, four, four, okay? For our purposes right now, we're really only concerned about our top number. Our top number is gonna tell us how many beats go in a measure. Okay, well, great. So if our top number is four, that means we get four beats in a measure. But who remembers what a measure is? Hmm. How about a measure line? Okay, so a measure is a space of music. You can tell when one measure ends and a new measure begins because you will see a measure line like this. Now my music right here doesn't have the musical staff. It doesn't have those five lines going across, but that's okay because we're only worried about rhythm right now. But you will see your measure lines are gonna cut through your whole staff, okay? So the space from the beginning to your first measure line, that's a measure. From that line to the next line, that's another measure. And so on and so forth, okay? A lot of us that were working on our spring music already, um, you guys were paying attention to the measure numbers, right? So <clears throat> if your piece has 60 measures in it, but your conductor doesn't want you to go all the way back to the beginning, they'll give you a measure number. They'll number the measures. Here's one, here's two, three, four, five. So you know, oh, okay, let's all start at measure 10. That's easy, right? Now, when your piece ends, at the very end of your piece, you're not going to have a regular measure line. You are going to have what we call a double bar line, like this. So it's really two lines put together. And that's how you know that's the end of the piece of music, okay? So we've got measure lines. You can also call a measure line a bar line. I call it a measure line. So measure lines separate your measures. A double bar line indicates it's the end. Your time signature tells you how many beats go in each measure. Um, for now, our bottom number is always going to be four. Like I said, four, four is the most common time signature. So there's actually another way you might see it written. You might see it written like a big C. Okay. So if you're ever playing a piece of music, and I'm going to show you an example of this later. If you're ever playing a piece of music and there's a big C at the beginning, it just means four, four. Okay, they're the exact same thing. The reason we use the big C is because it stands for common time. Because four, four is really the most common time signature that there is. If you're listening to a piece of music on the radio, I bet you can count along with a steady beat of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like the whole time. That's because 4-4 four, four is our common time. So right now, well, I'm going to show you some examples of 4-4 four, four and common time that you've seen and maybe some that you haven't seen. So here we go. Okay, guys, here we are. We're looking at our cello book. This is the very first page of our cello book. Look familiar? Okay. I want you to look. Everybody who's played with me from the beginning of the year, my string players, even my beginner, my third years, look, I mean my third graders, everything is in 4-4, four, four. right? And we've got one, two, three, four, because we talked about in our review on Dojo today that these quarter notes get one beat each, so one plus one plus one plus one, that's four, and our quarter rests get one beat each, so that's one plus one plus one plus one, okay? So there's your time signature or your meter in action. I'm going to move over a little bit here. This is my violin book. Now, I know I had some violinists who are a little bit past this point, so we're just going to review this on page 19. Rachel's Repeat, Little Liza Jane, Can Can down at the bottom. Look at it. 
four, 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 four. Ha ha. Very common. Okay. So you guys have all played stuff in four, four. The last example I'm going to show you is actually a piece of my French horn music. Okay. This is a Mozart concerto. Okay. That I've played on my French horn. This is the French horn part. Look it. It's really written in four, four, but in this case, they give me the C for common time. I've got a beat arrest. I've got a multi-measure rest. My band kids know about that, most of you. And then look right here. Two beats plus two beats. See my measure lines? So I know that measure is filled up because it equals four. Okay? I've got another half note. That's two beats. And a half rest. We reviewed this in dojo today. Half rest sitting above your line. Two beats. Whole rest, like a hole in the ground below the line. Okay? So that's four beats. So that takes up that entire measure. All right, so there are your examples of four, four, and common time. Okay, so you ready for your challenge? Last week on Dojo, I challenged you guys to write your own rhythm using whole notes, half notes, quarter notes. And you could use them in any pattern that you wanted for any amount of time that you wanted. Now, your challenge is going to be to put them into measures. So you're gonna group them in measures of four, four, or even three, four. So let's say, our time signature has changed. And now it's three, four. Well, now you only need three beats to fill up a measure. So if I was going to do this, maybe I would do three quarter notes. Since each quarter note gets one beat, I've got one plus one plus one. That equals three. Draw my measure line. If I want to do something a little different, maybe I could do a half note. That's two beats. Hmm. Oh, and then today on Dojo, we reviewed some rests. So what kind of rest could I put here? What would fill up my measure and make it equal my top number of three? If you're thinking a quarter rest, that's what I was thinking as well. Okay, even though it's a rest, and even though you're not playing, it still takes up a beat. Okay, so it still counts. All right, so now, besides incorporating the rest, the whole rest, the half rest, the quarter rest, I am um, want you to write your own rhythms again, but you're going to be putting them into measures, okay? And you can use rest this time too. So. Okay, so here's the deal. Before you write your own rhythms, I've actually come up with some measures that are partially filled up. So I have some measures in 4-4 four, four, and some measures in 3-4. String players, if you've played Moonlight Dance or you're working on Moonlight Dance or even French folk song, both of those pieces are in 3-4, okay? So just a little reminder that you have played stuff in 3-4 as well. So <clears throat> I want you to get ready. Da -da -da! to pause this video. And you can come back to this point in case you need to like see it again. I'm gonna show you my measures and I want you guys to fill them in. I'm also going to uh, scan them and upload them onto Google Classroom. Again, you don't have to do any of this. This is if you want to, if you need something to do, you wanna learn a little bit more, okay? It's gonna make you a stronger musician to really have a good grasp of how to count all this stuff. So, are you ready to pause? Here it is, number one. So, you're gonna either copy down these measures or you could find it on Google Classroom. Can you see? And I want you to fill in whatever you want here that would make this measure equal your top number. Same thing for your second measure. Each of these rhythms is only gonna be two measures long. How many beats do you already have? How many more do you need? What can you put there? Same thing down here. What do I already give you? What does it need to equal? I've got three of these. Here's your second one. And remember, you can use rests again. Here's paper number two, you can pause. Keep in mind down here, our time signature changes. So this measure only needs three and this measure only needs three because our top number has changed and we're now in three, four. 
So we're going to think about how many beads do you have? What could you put here to fill it up to make it equal three? Okay, and finally, last one is a free for all. Do not just put all rests, by the way, you sneaky children, because I've seen kids do that. Put some notes in here. You can fill these measures up however you want, as long as they equal your top number. So I'm going to scan these. I'm going to upload them to Google Classroom if you want to see them. Um, or you could pause it and you could write it down. You could even do it on a whiteboard and erase it. If you want to take a picture and send it to me, that's awesome. I would love to see that. Um, what else? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, finally, I want you to try to play the rhythms that you came up with, whether they were my partial rhythms, like we collaborated on, because I started them and then you finished them, or one that you completely created yourself. And now you've put in the correct measures, play it on your instrument. That's the next step. Okay. So as far as rhythm goes next week, we're going to be talking about eighth notes and we'll have stuff to do um, with that coming up on Thursday. Thursday is going to be my next post. We will do um, some more note stuff. That's not just rhythm, um, different notes, playing different notes on your, on your uh, music staff. So let's see what you come up with for rhythms.